Aaron, you hear about the men's volleyball team this They've been on such a roller coaster ride this season. Well, Savannah, it's always a roller coaster ride right here at Sports Scene, so honestly, I'm not that bit surprised. We'll talk about it. We'll also bring an infielder Lars Newbar into the studio. Sports Scene starts now. <laughs> Welcome to the luxurious Annenberg Media Center. I'm Savannah Boone. And I'm Aaron Glazer. The USC men's volleyball team is taking on sixth ranked UCLA tonight at the Galen Center. But Savannah, when it's a rivalry game like this, rankings really don't matter that much. Yeah, but defense does. And sophomore outside hitter Juan Luco Grasso said that after practice this week, that defense will be one of the deciding factors in tonight's game. A lot of, a lot of defense. You know, they're a really powerful team offensively. and. Uh, Defense, defense, and passing, that's for sure. Uh, Serving pass is going to win that game. USC is back in the top 15 after falling out earlier this season. After a big losing streak, the Trojans have turned it around by winning their last five games. But let's not be too optimistic. This Trojan team has been very streaky, going through a roller coaster ride of wins and losses. As you can see, they lost five straight in January, were a bit up and down in February, and are now on a five game winning streak. So it really almost never seems like we know what's going to happen. But Ultimately, they are ranked 11th in the nation despite being a game under 500, and that precious ranking and record, Savannah, are on the line tonight against UCLA. Yeah, and getting this win against a top-ranked team would mean a lot for USC, but to do so, they're going to have to get, th get through UCLA's tough offense, speaking of which, outside hitter JT Hatch and setter Micah Ma'a have been a dynamic duo in the front row, with Hatch leading the team in kills and Ma'a in assists. And actually, Micah was on the All-MPSF first team last year, and JT was an honorable mention. But we'll see who will be mentioning after the two teams clash tonight at the Galen Center. Now let's hear about a different volleyball team from Julia Adams. Four weeks into the 2017 season, USC Beach Volleyball remains the top-ranked team in the country. This does not come as much of a surprise, as the women of Troy are two-time defending national champions and are on an active 47-match winning streak. In fact, the team hasn't lost since dropping a match to the Florida State Seminoles on March 11, 2016. The woman of Troy's recipe for success starts at the top. With the revered head coach Anna Collier, who is in her sixth year with the program and has a remarkable 124 to 17 record at USC. Collier is the only coach ever to reach 100 career victories in the history of collegiate beach volleyball. Collier isn't the only reason for the team's success, however, thanks to her all-star roster. The woman of Troy started the season with four new pairs, and each one has already reached 10 wins. But the dynamic duo that rises above the rest is seniors Kelly Clays and Sarah Hughes, who sport a whopping 92-match winning streak. Why is this significant? Well, Clays and Hughes are the winningest pair in USC history, with 110 all-time victories and only three losses. They have not lost a game since April 2, 2015. Behind Clays and Hughes are junior partners Joe Kremer and Jenna Belton in second, and then junior Therese Canyon and senior Nicolette Martin in a close third. Both duos were already awarded their respective Pac-12 Pair of the Week award this season. The women of Troy are making the fight to stay on top look easy by already securing wins over the other NCAA top-ranked teams this season, including number 2 Pepperdine, number 3 UCLA, and number 4 Florida State. If the team continues to dominate like they are now, it will be a smooth road to a third national championship. While the beach volleyball team has been dominating, the USC baseball team has been a bit up and down. After a tough stretch in late February, USC has turned it around and has a big matchup this weekend against Arizona. I'm now joined by Kristen Lago to help talk some baseball. Kristen, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. So Kristen, despite winning their last two series against Arizona State and Washington State, uh, USC is still only 15 and eight and not ranked. What happened? So. That's the big mystery for a lot of USC baseball fans. They're ranked third in the Pac-12, so they're doing really well in their conference at four and two. But like you said, they're 15 and eight overall, and that's not translating into the rankings in the national polls. So what they need to do is really up their winning percentages. And this season, they have been really up and down. They started off the season quite literally, pun intended, swinging. They won four and they were four and zero, but then they lost the next five out of seven. So you can't be up and down like that if you want to show up in the rankings. But they are on a bit of a win streak. They've won their last three weekend series. So I think their up and down season really speaks to the young team that we're seeing on the field. They're relatively inexperienced. I think they only brought back 
four older guys, four returning starters. So it speaks to the young team. So I think if they can keep on their upward swing, you'll see them in the rankings. Yeah, and I definitely think being a young team is a huge factor for them. Uh, someone who stands out to me is Lars Newbar. He's a sophomore. Big improvements, big improvements since last season, and I think he's going to do big things for uh, the Trojans. I definitely agree with you. He actually leads the team right now in slugging percentages and on base percentages. And another guy who's really doing his thing on the field is uh, another underclassman, Brandon Perez. He leads the team in batting averages. So if those two can spark the offense, I think you're going to see uh, them win some more games and show up in those rankings. Definitely some new leadership on the mm -hmm. team. Uh, coming off a big, we, a big win against San Diego State last night, USC heads into hostile territory as Arizona is undefeated at home. Mm -hmm. uh, they just got swept by number one team in the nation, Oregon State, but they are still a plenty formidable opponent. Who are some of Arizona's key contributors on both offense and defense? Yeah, like you said, definitely a formidable opponent indeed. Arizona will be tough to beat for this USC team. They are nationally ranked in all five of the national polls that I looked at. So that's already showing that they are a really good team this year. But it starts with their offense. Uh, you, as you can see, some of the hitters to watch here. But their whole team is really shining on offense. They've scored 217 runs this season in only 23 games. And they lead the country in scoring at 9.4 runs per game. So that's thanks in part to these guys right here. As you can see, Alfonso Rivas, he currently has the highest batting average on the team. Wow. JJ is second in the country in terms of doubles that he's hitting. And Jared Oliva has four home runs this season, one of the best sluggers on their team. So every time they step up to the plate, you know, there's a chance that they're going to hit it and there's a chance that they're going to score. So really tough to pitch against. Definitely a strong offense. I mean, all these guys are hitting above 300, which is super mm -hmm. impressive. But you can't forget about Arizona's pitching lineup right now. They are killing it. They are killing it, yes. Understatement indeed because they definitely are. When they're at the mound, uh, they're going to be really hard to hit against. we got to start off with the starter, J.C. Cloney. Uh, as you can see, he's 5-0 and when he's at the mound, and his ERA is extremely low. But if you look at the reliever, Cameron Ring, almost identical numbers. So I was looking at the uh, actually all-time leaders in the MLB, and their ERAs are lower than those. Uh, obviously, you can't compare it too much, but definitely still very hard to hit against. Yeah, these are rivaling some of the pros' numbers right now. I mean, Cy Young winner Max Scherzer. He hasn't even hit these numbers. I mean, a little bit of a different scenario, but still super impressive. Very impressive indeed. And we already hit on the offense, but I got to say they rank in the top five in batting average, on base percentages, doubles per game, scoring and runs. So couple that with the pitchers to watch. They're going to be really tough for USC to beat. A great opponent, but uh, with how good Arizona is, it will certainly be a tough test for USC this weekend. But if they could come out with a series win, that would be one of their biggest of the season. Kristen, thanks so much for joining me. Now let's go to Aaron, who is with one of the USC players who will be taking the field in Tucson this weekend. That's right, Savannah. As USC gears up to face Arizona in Tucson this weekend, absolutely a key cog to the team will be sophomore Lars Newtbar. Lars now joins me here in the studio. Lars, thanks so much for being here. Thank you guys for having me. It's a pleasure. Absolutely, Lars. So you've made a lot of improvements from last year to this year, and now you lead a team in home runs. So what can you tell me about you know, what those improvements were like and what you did in the offseason? Um, you know, a lot of it, you know, was obviously some work in the cages with some of my teammates. You know, during the fall of this season, a lot of the guys were in there spending a lot of their hours, you know, taking taking their own time and, and going in there working hard. And, and obviously, summer ball helped me out. But um, a key contributor to, I think, what, you know, has led me to the success I've been having this year is uh, working on the mental side of the game. You know, obviously, sports have a lot to do with the physical aspect, but um, people underestimate the, uh, the mental side of the game. So, you know, that's, a, that's been a big improvement. And something else that we've seen improving is your leadership team. You've taken on a bit more of a role. So is that mental side, you know, kind of transferred into your leadership? Definitely. I mean, that's always been a part of my game, you know, being kind of a vocal leader last year, obviously as a freshman, you know, on a, on a very old and mature team, you know, it's, it's tough for me to, you know, put my two cents into whatever, you know, everything I thought. But um, this year we have a real young team and, you know, everyone on this team is considered a leader, you know, at, at any point in time, you know, a freshman or a senior can step in and say what they want to do. But, um, you know, so, you know, being being on a young team, it, it's 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 a lot easier this year for me to you know step in and be more of a vocal leader this year. Absolutely, and you know, with that team, you guys are four and two in the Pac-12. Yeah. That goes for third in the conference. Mm -hmm. So going forward, what are your goals and expectations? It's been kind of an up and down ride, but yeah. going forward, what do you guys expect? You know, we expect you know to go out and play play hard every single game. You know, whether it's a win or a loss, that's not really what we look at. We look at you know ourselves, like you said, a young team. You know, so we're gonna go out there and play with a lot of energy every single day. Whether it comes out as a win or a loss, we just don't want to beat ourselves. So, you know, that's that's something that we, we look forward to. And obviously, you know, we want to chase, you know, winning the Pac-12 championship. That's going to be tough, you know, because we've got some stiff competition ahead of us. But, um, you know, we you know with with this team, we got, we got something special. You know, we got a very good 
group of guys, and, and anything's possible with this team. Absolutely, Lars. And you know, Wesley, I understand that when you were in high school, you were actually recruited to play football at USC, but yeah. obviously you chose baseball. So what was that decision like, going to baseball? Um, you know, the, there, there were some times going into my senior year when I had some of the USC coaches coming over to my football practices, talking to me. You know, they'd pull me out of class, and, and you know, I'd, I'd get to talk to them a little bit. Um, obviously, you know, they made the right decision with going with Sam Darnold because <laughs> that guy's the man. But, um, yeah, you know, they, uh, you know, Playing football in high school was, was you know, I loved it. You know, football in high school was actually my favorite sport, but I knew I wanted to go to a school where I was good, you know, academically, athletically, and, you know, obviously, you know, USC has connections in, you know, like no other. So um, I kind of fell in love with the school itself, and I, I felt that the coaches really wanted me here to play baseball. So um, that's what ultimately what um, made me decide to come here. All right, Lars. Well, you know, the baseball team is really glad to have you uh, yeah. as one of its main contributors. And once again, you can catch Lars and the rest of that Trojan baseball team this weekend against Arizona. Now let's head to Alexa Palermo for a look around social media. Thanks, Aaron. The ballpark was packed this weekend as the Trojans took on Arizona State. With all the freebies, freebies going around the ballpark, social media was packed with people having fun. Let's check it out. USC Tubas tweeted, just an average day for your Trojan tuba, supporting our team no matter the sport or the season. Having the band at the game makes it all the more special. CJ Stubbs' mom tweeted, tough loss last night, referring to Saturday's game, but got the series win today, hashtag fight on. Mama Stubbs sure was proud of her son. And Dodger fan 84 tweeted, thank you USC baseball for a great win and my nephew was happy to meet and talk with the players and get autographs today. Sunday is always kids day at the ballpark and Steven's nephew seems to have had a great day. That's all I have from the Twitterverse, back to you guys. Thanks Alexa, while the baseball team was making news on the interwebs, other USC teams were making moves in the standings. It's time to light the torch. The women's water polo team extended its win streak to 51 with two wins over the weekend. USC outscored its opponents 40 to eight in those two games. Senior driver Stephania Harlebitis notched seven goals on the weekend to give her 253 in her career, moving her into second place all time on USC's scoring list. Now players embrace that long win streak, but they have more of their eyes on a bigger prize. That's what motivated us come to the pool every day and train like the defending national championship team like train with that goal in mind every every single second of practice so it's a good thing too it's good to set the bar up now on to the pitch the women's lacrosse team returns home this weekend for a two-game series against MPSF opponents USC is coming off a bit of a shaky four-game East Coast road trip where the team picked up its first back-to-back -back losses since February of 2015 Senior Michaela Michael did not have a shaky weekend as she picked up her seventh career player of the week award after posting six goals in the win over Ohio State. USC will now put a 20 game home win streak on the line versus Fresno State on Friday. And racing from lacrosse over to the track, junior sprinter Deanna Hill was named the Pac-12 track and field women's track athlete of the week. That's a mouthful to say. Hill set a new personal record in the 100 meter last week at the Aztec Invitational with a blazing 11.18 second time. The team now switched gears to prepare for the Austin and the Texas relays. I'm kind of reloading now, now that uh, outdoor season is approaching and uh, we've gone pretty heavy for the past two weeks. So we might go in feeling, feeling a little heavy, but in the past that hasn't stopped us. Amelie must have just said the award that her teammate just won being out of breath that much. But the Texas Relays will start this afternoon and continue until the weekend. Those guys may not be running with the Olympic torch, but this torch has definitely been lit. Guys? Hey, Savannah, did you know that USC is in the Final Four? I did. That's right, Aaron. They're hoping for the Cinderella run to continue against one seed Gonzaga on Saturday. Well, Savannah, you know, we really could hope this was the Southern California USC, but unfortunately it's South Carolina. However, there is a member of the extended Trojan family participating this weekend. Yeah, USC freshman Jonah Matthews' brother, Jordan Matthews, used to play for Cal, transferred to Gonzaga, and this year is in the Final Four. Earlier this month, Jonah reflected on how watching his brother play is one of his favorite basketball memories. I think when my brother got in last year, then I watched him play. I think that's my favorite memory watching him play. He got like 25 points last year, so that's probably my favorite memory to watch Madness. You know, my predictions for Saturday are both that North and South Carolina are going to come out on top. And you know, I'm 
going for the underdog, so I personally want South Carolina. What are your thoughts? You know, Savannah, as much as it would be cool to see North and South Carolina play against each other, I'm going to stick with the Pac-12. I kind of want Oregon. And okay. Gonzaga, Karnowski is just too much of a presence down low. I see Gonzaga and Oregon in the finals. Just kind of make things interesting with you there. Definitely respectable picks. Uh, well, thanks for watching Sports Scene. For everyone here at Annenberg Media, I'm Savannah Boone. And I'm Aaron Glazer. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Sports Scene USC. We'll see you next week. Oh, <laughs>